Hello, this is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle with a brief tutorial on the binomial probability distribution, which, as distributions go, is fairly basic, but it pops up quite often in quantitative finance and risk. To show you how it works, here I graphed a, or represented a binomial random variable. So if you imagine starting here at this node, and we're assuming the random variable can take only one of two possible states. So that's what it means to be a binomial variable. Only two outcomes. In this case, either up or down. That would be just like a coin toss where we could have either heads or tails. So this might be where we're saying the economy or a stock might go into an up state or into a down state. I realize at first glance that looks ridiculously simple. That, of course, no realistic situation only has two outcomes. It turns out we can use this uh, for quite a few situations. Uh, now, in this first, the first node here, if we go up, then we will take a tech second step, and the very uh, the random variable will either go up or down again, and then I have a third step here, and finally a fourth step. So this is a four-step tree binomial tree because at each node there's only two possible places to go. We'll end up in one of these 16 final outcomes. There's 16 that happens to be 2 raised to the fourth power because we have four intervals here or four steps, time steps. And, and further, each of these random variables at each node is independent. So if from the beginning, if I go down on the first trial, the fact that I go down has no correlation here with the subsequent outcome. That next outcome in the second step is totally independent of this outcome. So we have independent variables with two outcomes. That's the nature of the binomial variable. Now let me use the function. If we go over to the right here a bit, here in light blue is the density function for the discrete variable that is the binomial. Now the binomial is discrete, so we say the probability that the random variable x is equal to some value, some value x is given here by this function where n is the total number of trials, in our case that was 4, x could be called the number of successes or in our case it could be the number of up outcomes and then we have n minus x then we have p so this is important p is the probability of a success or in our case the probability of an up outcome q is just the probability of the other outcome remember there's only two outcomes so q is going to necessarily equal one minus p it's either p or q probability of success Q is probability of not success or 1 minus P. This term right here is simplifies to or is a representation of the combination. That's the function for combination. The combination of X items taken from N items in total. So that if we apply this for the probability of X equals 2 in our case where there are four trials, remember we took four steps on the tree, that's going to be divided by 2 factorial, 4 minus 2 factorial, plug all those in, and here's the probability in my binomial tree, the probability of an up is the same as the probability of a down, so we have 50% here in both of this, and this all happens to multiply out to 37.5%. What does that mean? If I just go tilt over here to the left on my tree a bit, Remember, we said after four trials, there's 16 different outcomes. The probability that x equals 2, in our case, what we're saying is, what's the probability that we'll have two successes out of the four, or really, this could be two up movements out of the four. So there is a 37.5% chance, which is the same as... 6 divided by 16. So out of the 16 out possible outcomes in our random tr experiment in our set of Bernoulli trials, 6 of these involve outcomes where there were 2 up movements and only 2 up movements. So for example, this one here, this outcome here, which was an up, then a down, then an up, then a down, that outcome involved two ups and two downs. That's one of the six. 
Here's another one. See how the sequence or order is different, but still we have an up, down, down, up. We still have two ups among the four total. That's the second example among the 16. So there are six of these that involve two and only two up outcomes out of the total of four. So when we did that, when we multiplied the formula by hand, we got 37.5. But also, I could just use Excel's built-in function. So here, I'm going to hone in on this cell here, hit Edit, and notice I've got equals binom dist. That's the function that takes four parameters first, the number of s. So that's the number of successes. That in our case is two. In my case, I'm using set success to be the same thing as up outcomes. It's either up or down, success or failure. So we have two. What, is the, what does the binomial distribution tell us is the probability of two successes out of a total of, now my second parameter is up here, n, four trials. So again, probability of two successes out of four trials. I also need to give it the probability of a success. That's this third parameter, and that's in our case 50%, even Steven. And finally, false to indicate that we're not doing a cumulative distribution, but we're doing the density function. It's a discrete function, so we'll give it a false. I give, give it those four parameters, and I did in fact get 37.5%. That's the same as the formula here. And so you can see I did it for all possible cases. On the left, we had 16 possible outcomes. That's four trials of the binomial variable. So x, there's a probability that we have zero ups, one up, two up, three up, and four ups. So four ups would be, let's just look at where is that on the diagram. That's this one here. That's where, that's where we ended this uppermost node where we had four sequential up movements, node to node, up, 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 up. There's only one outcome among the 16 that represents all four ups. That's this one right here. That's 6.5%. Also, there's only one outcome where x is 0. In other words, where we had 0 ups. That would have to be this one down here, which is all downs. That, there's only one case of that also, 1 out of 16. So that's right here. So we have the, the scenario of 0 ups, 1 up, 2 up, three ups and all four ups and the corresponding percentages those sum necessarily to 100 percent finally just to give you some properties for the binomial we say the mean or expected value this is pretty intuitive it's the number of trials times the probability of success in our case we ran four trials n was four the probability of an up was 50 percent 4 times 50 percent is 2 the mean or expected value is therefore 2 and we can see that's confirmed here that means what we expect to happen is 2 ups out of the 4 trials total and then also here we've got the variance sigma squared is the variance that happens to be n times p times q remember q is equal to 1 minus p we can always we can take the square root of the variance to get the standard deviation and here's the standard deviation of that binomial distribution it's the square root of the product of n p and q okay so i'm almost done let me just highlight the key properties of the binomial first we said it's discrete as opposed to continuous. Yesterday I showed the normal distribution which was continuous. The binomial is not. There are discrete outcomes. If we look at the 16 outcomes, they're discrete. There's nothing in between this first outcome and the second outcome. Second, the binomial distribution describes or characterizes the outcome of n independent Bernoulli trials, where the Bernoulli trials is like a coin toss. It has either a heads or a tails. It's a yes or a no, a success or a failure. Technically, you might say a one or a zero, nothing in between. It tells us about the probability of p successes in n trials. The mean or expected value is p times n. The variance is given by this formula here. Thank you very much for your time.